I think castles are amazing because they have survived for hundreds of years, often after being pounded during the English Civil War. This castle was built to impress, but not for war. However, ended up with cannons firing from its walls during the English Civil War, but then survived as a romantic ruin. This is the gorgeous Raglan Castle in Raglan, Monmouthshire, Wales. This video will provide a brief history, context and visiting tips. Please stay to the end for all the detail. I aim to visit and make short videos on many castles across the country in addition to my regular ones. So please like, subscribe and click the alerts bell for future releases. Thank you for watching Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images. Raglan Castle is located here in Monmouthshire, Wales roughly nine miles from Monmouth. On this map from Historic Wales, the red shaded area is the castle, which is a grade one listed building and also a scheduled ancient monument. For context, let's look at monarchs. This chart goes from the present King Charles III back to 1066 and William I. Setting aside if there was any earlier settlement here or not, we know that in 1432, the land was purchased and the great tower and gatehouse were built. And this was in the reign of King Henry VI. This was the time of the War of the Roses, when two rival families were fighting over the throne. And the owners of the house were caught up in this during the reigns of Edward IV and then Richard III of Princes in the Tower infamy, culminating in Henry Tudor, Henry VII, father of Henry VIII, getting the throne. Looking at this on the timeline, we can see Edward IV lost the throne in 1470, but regained it in 1471. Following his death in 1483, his son Edward V ruled for a very short time before his uncle Richard III took the throne. And then he lost it in battle to Henry VII in 1485. Raglan Castle is a fortress stroke palace rather than a medieval castle, though there possibly could have been an early fortification on the site given its strong position. What we largely see today, however, came about some time after the period of great castle building. So let's look at some history. The tower and gatehouse date from around 1432. The tower has its own moat, which looks incredibly picturesque now, it was built to impress, and this was known as the Yellow Tower of Gwent. This is an artist's impression of what the castle might have looked like. It's from an information board on the site. The tower can clearly be seen with its dominant position over the very large castle complex. As an aside, it's interesting to note the gun loops are for show only as many are actually inaccessible from inside the castle. The rest of the castle was built later and added to until it reached its peak in the 1620s. This is an artist's impression of what the castle might have looked like then, taken from the guidebook. Huge, imposing and impressive are words that spring to mind. This was a castle for entertaining and show. And that is what many of the notice boards around the castle indicate. It was lavish. All of this came to an abrupt end with the English Civil War, when the owner, a staunch royalist, held out against the parliamentarians. Earthworks were added outside the castle walls for heavier guns, and lighter cannon were added to the castle. When a siege was imminent, the garrison was even increased to 800, with enough supplies to last a considerable siege. However, the inevitable happened when the parliamentarians arrived and were able to get close enough to pound the castle with cannon fire. They then surrendered. As was common, the parliamentarians instructed the castle to be destroyed, but it proved too strong. So it was slighted, but that is why so much remains today. However, again, as was common, slighted castles were a good, cheap source of building materials, both for the owner and the locals. 
so often bits were sold or taken. In this case, one steward of the castle even got the title the Grand Dilapidator. With a number of chimneys, window frames, etc., he removed. The owner in 1756 put a stop to this, and Raglan Castle became a tourist attraction, with the first guidebook incredibly published in the 19th century. So, what remains today? As you drive into the car park, you can see what can best be described as a picturesque ruin. It does look good, and if it's a clear day, you can even see reflections in the castle from the moat. It is a large site with tall ruins and good signage saying what each bit of the ruin was used for. There is a restored grand staircase going up to the wall. There is an enclosed basement, though I'm not sure about these skeletons here behind the bars. One of the best bits are the bridges and the walkways, all adding to the picturesque ideal. And then the Grand Tower, where you can walk up and look down at the great view, or be down and look up or over the water. All very impressive. Visiting tips. The castle is administered by Kadu, and there is an admission charge. For opening times, it is best to check the website. One of the interesting bits about this castle are there are warning signs such as this and this all over the castle where there are steep drops but it is all very clear but walking around is mainly over paths so most of the changes in height involve going up or down steps though as these warning signs say there are some steep drops. It is possible to walk around the outside of the building and if you're up to it, it is a good way of really seeing the size of the walls and the dominant position on the hillside. There are toilets in the grounds and at the entrance there is a gift shop. Given its location, it is easiest to travel by road and there is a good sized car park at the site. It is a great picturesque ruin that was not intended for military action but did see it and paid the price. But, fortunately for us, sufficient survived to make it well worth a visit. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, click alerts for future releases and subscribe. Brought to you by Eclectic Experience. Change seen through images.